On today's show, you'll be shocked to see who's the biggest car company in the world. Ford reports strong but kind of disappointing earnings. And BMW pioneers new manufacturing technology. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for fans of the automotive industry. Say, who's the biggest car company in the world? Well, surprise, surprise. For the first half of 2016, the Volkswagen Group sold more cars, trucks, buses, and vans than any other automaker. That's quite an accomplishment for a company that's been swamped by mostly bad news this year. Even more impressive, VW is pulling away from its closest competitors, Toyota, and General Motors. VW AG sold 5.1 million vehicles in the first half, up 1.5%. Toyota sold 4.9 million vehicles, down 0.6%. And GM sold 4.7 million, and that was down 1.2%. But while VW did well in the showroom, its financial earnings took a hit in the second quarter. Sales were up 2.2%. And that boosted revenues to almost 57 billion euros. But VW's operating profit plunged 45%, and its net profit fell even further by more than 55%. Part of that decline was due to currency changes. Some of it was due to lower profits in China. But the big drop came from all the costs that it's incurring over its diesel emissions scandal. The Ford Motor Company also posted its second quarter earnings, and while the company is solidly profitable, these earnings are a little bit disappointing. Sales were down ever so slightly, but revenue jumped nearly 6% to more than $39 billion. But Ford's pre-tax profit slipped 12% to $3 billion, and its net profit fell more than 8% to just under $2 billion. One really bright spot for Ford is that its European operations are solidly profitable. Ford of Europe posted a pre-tax profit of $467 million, and that was three times higher than it was last year. But nearly all of the increase in Europe was offset by lower profits in North and South America, in Asia, in Africa, and the Middle East. Acura is going to race its NSX, but the version it's going to put on the track is very different from the one that you can buy in the showroom. And that is coming up next. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Only a week after Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced his dreams to make electric semi-trucks and buses in the future, Mercedes is hitting the ground driving. It just unveiled its e-truck, an all-electric heavy-duty truck with a 200-kilometer or about a 124-mile range and a towing capacity of up to 25 tons. It's powered by two 125-kilowatt motors mounted on the rear axle, which are fed by a 212 kilowatt hour battery pack behind the cab in between the frame rails. The truck is aimed at short distance deliveries in cities, especially those with air quality, noise, and restricted access zones. While Mercedes says a truck like this would be ready for production in the next decade, you've got to think the company is also considering pairing this setup with its new city pilot feature, which is used for autonomous city driving. It's one of the worst kept secrets in the business. And yesterday, Acura made it official. It is going to race a GT3 version of the Acura NSX. It will run in the Pirelli World Challenge Series in the North American GT class. Acura got permission to test the car during practice sessions of the World Challenge Series, which is running at the Mid-Ohio Racetrack this weekend. And they're doing it because Acura wanted to see how its car stacked up against the competition. But the GT3 version of the NSX will not be the all-wheel drive hybrid that you can buy. This race car is a V6 powered only, rear drive only version because the rules prohibit hybrid powertrains. But Acura is hoping to get those rules changed in the future. 
Hey, don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours later today when we go live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll have Todd Lassa from Automobile Magazine, Chris Pockert from CNET, and a gorgeous 71 Cadillac Eldorado in the studio. In fact, that thing is so ginormous, we had to measure the studio just to see if it would fit inside. So join us for some of the best insights into what's going on in the automotive industry, and that's AutoLine After Hours later today. Coming up next, Formula E sure looks like it wants to copy Indy cars. At Bridgestone, our engineers want to help make sure you're not stuck on the side of the road. Our revolutionary drive guard tires are engineered to take a puncture and drive up to 50 miles. Ready to go. Watch the Olympic Archer demo at BridgestoneTire.com. Like any good that gets manufactured, cars rolling down the assembly line are subject to quality checks. In the past, when it came to measuring body panels, that meant pulling them off the line, clamping them in jigs, and manually measuring every single dimension. In some cases, parts of the car even had to be ripped apart to test them. But now BMW has a much simpler and faster solution. It's testing out a fully automated optical measuring cell that uses non-contact sensors to scan the car. Then they use that to make a 3D model accurate to within microns. This allows barely visible deviations to be identified at an early stage. That data can then be used to make sure the manufacturing process maintains statistical control. And BMW will first use this technology to make the next generation 5 series. For those of you who pay attention to the Formula E racing series, any of you out there? You might notice a bit of a change soon. Formula E is going through something of a styling change. And here's the big news, a new front wing. The organizers call it, and I quote, stunning. Well, maybe. Seems to me with their rear body pods, those cars are looking more and more like indie cars. And while this new wing may be big news within the series, I'm not sure a new front wing is going to bring in more viewers. Anyway, that brings us to the end of today's report. Thanks for watching and y'all come back now.